Hello and welcome to Stearns. Today I'd like to take this opportunity to show you the proper procedure of adjusting the 56,000 series brake for friction disc wear. In dynamic stopping applications, you will see some level of friction disc wear. As the friction discs wear, the air gap also increases over time. The amount of friction disc wear and increase of air gap will vary based on certain variables such as inertial load and cycle rates. When the air gap reaches the specified maximum limit or above, it needs to be adjusted back within the factory specified range. These ranges vary based on the number of friction discs or torque rating of the brake. The example we have to work with today is a single disc six pound brake. Tools required to perform this adjustment include a small ruler, a 3 16th hex driver, a zero to 300 pound inch torque wrench, and a 3 8 inch nut driver. Once you have these tools at hand, let's get started. Step 1. Remove the housing. Using the 3 8 inch nut driver, remove the housing nuts and then remove the housing. This IP23 enclosure has two housing nuts and the IP54 will have three. Measure the length of air gap adjusting screws. Because the two separate air gap adjust screws are also the pressure points used in setting the brake, it's important to confirm these screws are evenly positioned. The simplest method is to measure the length of each screw with your ruler. If the contact point of the plunger or bottom of the T is at or above the reset line or below the set line, the brake will need to be adjusted. The 56,000 series brake is considered a universal mount brake meaning that it can be mounted to a motor in any combination of horizontal or vertical in a floor, ceiling, or wall motor mount position. In horizontal floor mount applications, such as this example, with the plunger in the 12 o'clock position, gravity will position the plunger in the true air gap position to allow for a visual check. If the application is vertical and or ceiling wall mount, the plunger may naturally drift from its true gap position, not having the benefit of gravity to hold the true position. In any of these configurations, you will need to manually push the plunger toward the coil frame just until you feel the tension or resistance of the pressure springs. Then check the air gap. Looking at this example, we can see that the air gap needs to be adjusted. Now we are ready to adjust the brake. The air gap adjust screws can be adjusted with the 3 16 inch hex wrench. Clockwise to reduce the air gap or counterclockwise to increase the gap. To increase or decrease the air gap, it is important that both adjustment screws must be turned equally. The best method is to turn each screw a quarter to a half inch turn per screw, alternating between the two screws, until the correct air gap is achieved. Now we can check our work. Verify the plunger position is now at or slightly above the set line. This brake is adjusted. The air gap tolerance is between the set and reset line. It is important that the plunger is not below the set line, otherwise the brake may not fully release due to not having enough travel space for the plunger to fully release the spring pressure that sets the brake. Finally, reattach the housing and tighten the nuts to torque spec of 8 to 10 pound inches using the 0 to 300 pound inch torque wrench.